Hello everybody and welcome back. As you start your academic career, you're going to do several activities in addition to doing research and publishing papers. For example, you may give talks, attend a conference, review papers, etc. All these activities are going to be included in your CV. However, as a student, you may not really know what are the current structure for a CV, what should be included in each section and what actually should be avoided. And when you apply for a job, the people who are going to review your application are going to expect the CV to have a certain structure and to file all the relevant information where it is supposed to be. So in this video, I'm going to cover this exact topic on how to write your academic CV. And without wasting any time, let's start. The first section that you should include is your personal information. So, of course, your name and last name, your contact information, so email, sometimes phone as well, and also your professional address in case, for example, you need to receive an offer letter, they need to know where to send it. And then how to find you on the web. I strongly recommend all students to have a professional website where you define your research interests, your publications, and all the activities that you are doing so that actually people can find you and you can be easily be integrated in the research community. You can also include other professional websites such as, for example, LinkedIn, your Google Scholar profile in order to understand what are the citations that your work has received. And I've also seen some students including some repositories such as GitHub in order to show what code they have developed through other years. The next section is your education. So the degrees that you have received, for example, you may have received a bachelor degree, a master degree, or you're going through a PhD. So for each of these, you should include your GPA, the major in which you have graduated. If you have done a thesis, also the thesis title could be a good idea, in which department and university you have received your degree and in which year as well. A common mistake that I've seen students doing is to include their high school diploma or even previous degrees in this section. So once you step into academia and into graduate school, nobody really cares what you have done before your bachelor degree. So you can avoid to include that part in this section. The following section would be your experiences. This is basically equivalent what you would find in a future CV which would be the job experiences. Since here you're still a student, you're not really expected to have had jobs already, but the experiences is basically the type of jobs that you have had until that time. So for example, you may have been a teaching assistant, a research assistant, and so for each of these, you should include in which department in university and when you have covered these positions. Also, if you have been a visiting scholar somewhere, this is also a good section in order to mention that. It is now a good point to talk about your research interest because someone wants to know what your work is about. So here, you really should keep this as short as possible. You may, for example, give a valid list of points or uh, maybe one or two paragraphs at most, but do not make a long statement about you, what your research is because for that, there is the research statement that will be part of your applications when you apply. We just want a short version of what your research focus is. The next section is probably one of the most important section of all your CV, which are your publications. There are several things here that are important to know when you prepare this section. So first off, I would organize it correctly by including the journal publication separated by the conference publications. Then you can include poster, demo and workshops. And then finally have a separate section with submitted papers and papers that are in preparation. Workshops, if you want, you could include them with conferences, but definitely do not put all together posters with conferences, with workshops, with demos, because they do not really belong to the same category, since a paper published as a demo is definitely not the same as a paper published as a full paper in a conference. Additionally, another common mistake that I see students doing is to mix submitted papers with published papers. So you can submit a paper everywhere. And this doesn't mean that that paper has any chance to actually being admitted. So by inflating the publication list with papers that have not been published, you're really kind of not giving a good impression about yourself. So it is good to have a section about submitted papers and papers in progress, because this shows that you're actually doing more than what you have already published, but you don't want to try to give a false impression about having more publications that you actually have. Let's now talk about the format of these publications that you're including in your CV. For journals, you should include the list of others, the paper title, the journal title with the publisher, such as, for example, IEEE or ACM or Elsevier, etc. 
the volume and issue and year of publications and also the pages. For example, here you can see a journal that we have recently published in which we have the list of authors, the title of the paper, and then we have mentioned the journal ACM Transactional Cyber Physical System. This paper was published on volume 8, issue 3, pages 1 to 26 in 2024. Conferences are similar, but they are slightly different. So here also you need to include the list of authors, the paper title, but then you need to include the conference name and the acronym because very often conferences are known by their acronym rather than the full name. Who is the publisher, such as, for example, IEEE, in which year? And you have the option of including the location. Some people do, some people don't, and that is not really relevant. The next section should include your honor and awards. So for example, if you have received any fellowship or scholarship, if you have received any best paper or best presentation award, if you have received any travel grant to attend conferences. So of course it is challenging to achieve any award, especially when you're a student starting. But what I suggest you to do is to attend some local events in which of course there is less competition and still you can build your CV and experience by attending these events, presenting, and then maybe receiving an award for your presentation or paper, for example. If you have some teaching experience, it's a good idea to also list that in your CV. For example, if you have been a teaching assistant for a certain department, you have taught a certain number of classes. And so we want to know what those classes are. And this is going to be very important when you apply, for example, for an assistant professor position, because you can show that you have actually had teaching experience teaching undergraduate or graduate classes. So for each class that you have taught, you should say the class name and number, if it was graduate or undergraduate level, and in which year and semester you have taught that class. As a student, you will be also required to present your research in several different occasions, at conferences, but also, for example, in department seminars, or you may be invited to present at a research symposium, etc. So it is important to include in your CV also these experiences. So in this section, you should include your talks and seminars. For each of these, you should include the title, the name of the event where you presented, and the university department and year in which you have done it, in case a university or department has organized that event. You can also include here a guest lecture. So for example, your advisor may say, hey, you are an expert in this topic. Why don't you come to my class and you present one lecture about this specific topic? And so that counts as a teaching experience. It counts as a guest lecture, and it is good to include it in this section as well. Another very important section is the section about mentorship. So as you become more of a senior student, you will work with younger students, which could be your PhD colleagues, but they could also be master students, undergraduate students, and you will advise them. So you will act as an intermediate advising role between your advisor and the actual student. And this is an extremely important section because as you go and apply for a future position, such as, for example, a postdoc or an assistant professor, people want to see that you have advised other students and you are able to do that successfully so that you are able to actually do the next job that you're going to apply for. So here for each student, you should mention name and last name, of course, what level, so undergraduate, master or PhD, the name of the project that this student have worked on in case there is a name and in which years you have worked with those students. Usually the last section, which is still very important, is the section about service. So service could mean a lot of different things, and I think it is important to first include the most important service for the academic community. So for example, if you have been a member of a technical program committee for a conference, definitely you should include that here. If you have reviewed papers for conferences and journals, you should include those here as well. Also, if you have volunteered in a conference in order to help the conference organization, this is something you can include that as well. Next, you can include the service that you have done, for example, for the university or for some association, for some campus organizations, for the, some department organization, etc. That also shows that you have been very active in including and growing the community around the work environment that you have been working on. So this concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like this video, subscribe and share it with other students to spread this content further. Thank you very much and see you next time.